everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, in this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at an up-tempo rock blues that's played with just three chords. So we're going to play an A chord, a C chord, and a D chord, and we're just going to repeat those same chords over and over again, but you're going to learn how to play these lead licks in between them so that in essence what you can do is you can have a jam session by yourself. And I have lots of other lessons like this. This is sort of a unique style to active melody, so if you like this sort of no accompaniment um, style of playing where you can jam by yourself, you don't need a, a jam track or a, another band, make sure you check out the lessons at Active Melody. Uh, for this lesson in particular, um, in this video we're going to learn the first half of, of what I played in the intro. If you'd like to learn the second half, as well as download the tablature for this lesson, you're going to want to go to ActiveMelody.com and look for EP151. That's a lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. Alright, so let's talk through tone settings real quick and then we'll jump into all the specifics of the lesson. I always get a lot of questions on, on tone settings and it always surprises me because it's usually pretty much the same answer every time. But I do want to just cover it in case you, you don't know. So I'm playing on the Les Paul and I have the uh, pickup selector switch on the treble pickup, which is the bridge pickup. I have the volume um, back at about 70%. So you, I always kind of back off a little bit just to take some of that overdrive off. Going out of the guitar and into the TS-808 pedal, which is made by Ibanez. It's a Tube Screamer pedal. And uh, I have the overdrive, the level, and the tone all at around 50% on that pedal. So they're all like kind of right in the middle of the dial. Going out of that pedal and into um, a head, which is a PV Classic 20 head. I use that. Now you could run this. You could run into any uh, amp that you've got. I've got uh, the, uh, the, the amp is set on a clean channel, so there's no overdrive on the head. And then I've got the reverb at about 40%. And the reason I use that head is because there's an SLR uh, output from that head that goes right into my camera. So that's what I always use when I record. That's not what I would use if I was playing live, but it's a great little amp. Although it would be good for that. It's a great amp for recording. Um, so that's so it's the PV Classic 20. And that's really it. Very simple setup. And it, it usually always looks kind of like that. I might add a little delay or something sometimes. But, um, but that's... That's the gist of it. All right, so let's get into the song. Now, the song uh, has three chords. It's very basic, um, and it starts with an A chord, and then it goes to a C chord, and then it goes up to a D chord. And so I'm going to show you all the strum patterns so that you can get that groove going, um, and then. After the so the first time through you play through the chords just to sort of establish the song and then the second time through we're going to use that same format but we're going to play some lead licks in between and you can see how you could take something like this and start to really jam with it you know without even having another musician it's a lot of fun to do and it's really not that hard you'll find out that once you kind of get it once you it clicks um, you you can just kind of keep going with it. Okay, so the first, the very first thing that happens is a pickup note, or two pickup notes that go, and it kind of has that Jimmy Page sound. I think maybe it's the Les Paul, but it's the, you know, it, it leads you into the A. And so the way you would count that in is you'd go one, two, three. So that A is on the one of the next measure. So those notes, it's just the open E string, or the open sixth string. There's the third fret, sixth string, or the G, a G note. And when I hit that note, I actually push it a little bit sharp. And then the A, or the open fifth string. So that's the very first thing that happens. Now, after I hit that A, then I fret and I make the A chord here on the second fret. And I'm just barring the first four strings on the second fret. And I'm playing strings five, four, and three. Now, if you happen to hit string two, that's part of the A chord as well, so it'll still work. But I'm trying to keep my, as I strum this thing, I'm trying to stick between those three strings there, five, four, and three. So, okay. So now that we've got the intro and the, the A chord made, uh, what you're going to do is, uh, the strum pattern goes, I hit the A note, and then I do a down stroke playing those three strings. And then I do two or do two more strums, but it's an upstroke and a downstroke, but these will be muted strums, so they sound like this. And that's something you can do on an acoustic or electric guitar, but 
the way that I'm doing that, if you look at my left hand, see these other fingers just sort of came down on the strings and they're not pushing down, they're just resting on them to mute everything. So if you are new to this, just practice getting some kind of rhythm going where you're playing an, a chord and then you're playing some muted strums. The key to the whole thing is keeping your right hand in motion. And you'll notice that as I get this thing going, it never stops. This motion just always happens. And you're, you're very efficient when you're doing that. So, okay, so now that we got the downstroke and then the... Uh, there's the up down which are muted and now we're gonna do an up up the next two chords are gonna both be up strokes so check it out here the up up okay so after that second one and the second one rings out a little longer and you can feel it if you watch the intro or just set a metronome you'll feel when sort of how long to leave it uh, ringing out now after I did that I did another up stroke and a down stroke up 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 down And then after that, I did another upstroke and another downstroke that are muted. I know this sounds complicated, but once we get past the A chord, this same rhythm applies to the other chord. So then it just becomes just moving your left hand, but the right hand kind of does its thing over and over again. So we have up, 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 down, up, down. Those are muted. And then we're going to do another up, down, up, down that ring out. All right, so to summarize that strum, you have down, up, 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 down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, up, down. Now, I was leaving out the, the muted strums, but that's the pass. So you write that down if you have to, but that's the, the, the groove. And once you get it going... It starts to really feel natural because my right hand just does this. It's just like you're playing the drums. Think of it that way. Once you kind of get that groove, it 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 feels right. So so that's how you strum that A chord. And if you have to watch that over and over again a few times, um, do that. Move, get the rhythm going at least some version of it before you move on and try and do the C chord and the D chord. You'll it'll serve you well to to learn that rhythm. Okay, so after the A part. Then I take the same strum pattern, so we've got that out of the way, and now we're going to move to the C chord. Now the way that I'm playing the C chord, I'm using this same chord shape. So imagine if I, instead of using my index finger there, I use my pinky there, and then this white bar, which is the nut on the guitar, becomes the bar for the next chord. So now we're going to play the C chord. So this is the cage system when you hear about that. This is using the A chord shape. And so now we're using the A chord shape, because we're playing an A here, but now we're using it here to make a C. So the way I'm going to play that, so now the way I play it is I use my pinky here and I bar the first four strings now on the fifth fret. And I use my index finger to come down and grab the fifth string on the uh, third fret. Now some of you may want to use your ring finger. Uh, that's probably the more appropriate way to do it, but I've always done that with my pinky. But now when I play strings 5, 4, and 3, now I'm playing a C chord. So we went from an A to a C, and then we can move it up two more frets, and we're going to have our D chord. So that, that same chord shape is used in, in all this. Now for the, for the C part, same strum pattern up to that point, but I threw in a little fill lick that went... Now that, what I did was I took this C chord shape and the way that I think of fill licks, I always kind of tie them, tether them to, to the chord. So when I see this chord shape, I see on this side of the chord shape, starting here at this fret, from here all the way up, I have all these little notes that I can play and it always works with whatever this chord is. So. So when I can 
you can hit two strings at once and hammer on to those and you have these little fill licks that work with this chord shape and that's all I did was I went it's just a complement to that so if that had been a D chord see how it works or the E chord so that, that's just a, a, a little trick or a little tip that you can remember. If you're ever playing a C chord or using this chord shape, you have these little fill licks that you can do. Just remember they're on this, if this is the fence, they're on this side of the fence. And you have uh, all these little notes to kind of play around with. And I could do a whole lesson on all the th little licks you can do on this one chord shape. There's a lot of them. And I do that. I cover that in a lot of lessons. But um, uh, Anyway, so that's what I'm doing there. I'm coming up here and I'm, I'm doing a hammer on between the 5th fret and the 7th fret. Uh, that's on the 4th string. Now, when I'm playing that, I'm playing the 4th and the 3rd string. So I'm hitting both those strings. And then I release it. And then I come to the 7th uh, fret 5th string. Slide down. As soon as I hit that note, I slide down to the fifth fret, and then back down to the to where my finger was in that chord. So, so it makes it easy to get right back to the chord. Now I don't play the chord anymore at that point because, from a timing perspective, we're going to now move on to the D chord. But I do hope that you understand where that fill like, how it matches up with a chord and how you can use that so you're not just limited to the stuff that I'm showing you. Now you've got this new... If you don't learn anything else in this whole lesson, that's a really handy little trick. So if you're playing in a jam session and you're playing rhythm, you're not just stuck in in that world. Right? Now you've got these little little licks that you can go to. And that's what really makes it make your playing stand out. Um, so then after that... I slid my index finger up to the 5th fret now. Now we're going to play the D chord. Same strum pattern. Now we're going to get back to the A. But before I do that, let me back up from the beginning now and I'll play everything up to this point. So here we go. And then we're going to just slide right down from the D to the C to the A. So it's just. So I did. I strummed it once, slid it down, strummed it again, and then we're to the A. So it goes. And then I did a little kind of like a little fill in between to get us to loop us back and that's again the same two notes that we've already learned we're just playing them in a the opposite direction now we're are backwards so we're starting on the third fret uh six string bit pulling it making it a little sharp releasing it and playing that e note and then we're right back to the a so um, so that's the rhythm part. So you could have a lot of fun just jamming on that rhythm. The only other little thing I'd point out is, A, um, if you've got the tablature, if you're a premium member, you've got the tablature, you can, it may be easier to, for you to follow along. I've notated all the, the muted strums, so you can print that out and follow along. If you're not, uh, B, <laughs> um, I just wanted to mention, in this part of it, there was one little part where I didn't strum. You can see my hand comes off and doesn't actually hit anything. See if you can see it. See it right there? I came, I came off and came back down to do another upstroke. That was the only, I didn't mention that when I was going through it, but I, I caught myself, just wanted to point that out. So that's the one point where you're not strumming anything. You're playing an upstroke, coming back, playing an upstroke again. But the reason I kind of keep my hand doing this is you keeping your hand in the motion. You don't ever break the motion. That's how it becomes very rhythmic. It's just like you're playing the drums. It becomes that way. Okay, so the second time through now... Um, oh, okay, so actually, no. Uh, so after... 
we'd play that. Then I came and I hit the open fifth string, just like we did the first time. But this time, instead of making my A here, I'm going to make it at a higher position on the neck. I'm going to make it here. And if you'll notice, each time, in the third time through, we're going to be up in a different position. So what I'm doing is I'm playing and I'm keep working my way up just to make it more interesting, to kind of get out of, we're getting out of first position, we're moving uh, into different positions on the neck. So now that we're in the, we're going to play an A here, the way that you do that, you bar the first two strings there on the fifth fret, middle finger on the sixth fret third string, and then your ring finger on the seventh fret fourth string. That's really just your A bar chord, but you're playing just those top four strings of it. Now, the timing of this, so it's, uh, it goes, so you got the down, up, that's it. So there's really only two pulses of the chord. There's a one, and there's the other one. Because after that, I took the rest of that measure and filled it with lead licks. Um, so let me show you what I played. That wasn't what I played, but it was close. That's it. So the, the, where we're at now is we're playing in the minor pentatonic scale, pattern one. So pattern one is right here. There we go. So that's kind of, so these licks, that's where they're coming from. And it's very convenient because we're playing the A chord right here. So that's why I would pick that area instead of somewhere else, another pattern. Um, so, uh, okay, so then I'm going to bar the first three strings on the fifth fret. This is for the, lick, uh, the lead part. And I'm going to play string two. And then I'm going to do a hammer on between the fifth fret and the seventh fret on the third string. And then, and that was a downstroke, and then I do another upstroke on the second string there. So it goes. Then the, there's seventh fret, and then on, and on the third string, and the fifth fret on the third string. So we have. And now we're on the seventh fret, fourth string, fifth fret, fourth string. So we're just walking right down the pentatonic. Pattern one. And then, again, another note right in sequence of that scale, but now we're down to the 7th fret 5th string, up to the 5th fret 4th string, so, and that's the lick. The only other little nuance I would point out is when I hit the 5th fret 3rd string, I pushed it a little bit sharp, and I always do that when I hit that note in in that scale. Hear it? It gives it more of a bluesy. Now, I come down to the C chord, and we already know how to make that C chord. It's the same uh, chord shape, and now watch this. Two pulses, just like we did with the, the A chord. We're going to do two with the C. After I do those two pulses, I'm going to go... There's the lick. We're still playing in minor pentatonic scale pattern one for the key of A. So the way I play that is I come up here to the 8th fret 2nd string. Remember, this is minor pentatonic scale, pattern 1. There's that note. So then I, after I hit that, I go to the 8th fret 3rd string, and as soon as I hit that, I slide down to the 7th fret, and then to the 5th fret on the 3rd string. Then I go down to the 7th fret 4th string, and then watch this. That is just barring the first three strings on the fifth fret. And this is, in fact, this is what we did in the previous lick. But it's doing a hammer on between the fifth fret and the seventh fret, playing strings two and three. So. And then I played the seventh fret and the fifth fret on the fourth string. 
Okay? So, let me just back up from the A. Now the next note is the D, because we're going to the D chord. So all I did from here is I moved my index finger up one string and grabbed that fifth string there on the fifth fret, which is the D note. And then I can, while I'm doing that, it gives me enough time to come down and grab the rest of that chord. Two more little pulses. And then I played this lick, which is A minor pentatonic scale again, pattern one. That's the lick. And the lick starts here on the fifth fret second string. Really cool lick. It sounds great fast, it sounds great slow, it's, and it's used all the time. Fifth fret second string. Then we're going to come up to the eighth fret second string and do a full bend. And then match that note on the fifth fret first string. And then, so we're, we walked up, now we're going to walk back down. Eighth fret second string, fifth fret second string. So, now watch this. So that's a, what they call a pre-bend released. Release. So we're going to go to the seventh fret third string, and we're going to do a pre-bend. So we were already bending before we actually played anything, and then as soon as we pick it, we release it. And then I come down to the 5th fret, 3rd string, and again I push that slightly sharp every time. It just colors that. And then there's the 7th fret and the 5th fret on the 4th string. And now we're back to the A. All right, so let me back up now, and I'm going to play through everything uh, from the from the beginning all the way up through. That's really the end of this first half. Now, if you want to watch the second half of this lesson, I'm going to go into playing the A chord and the C chord and the D chord in different positions, even higher on the neck, and there will be uh, a new set of licks introduced in those as well. You'll also have access to the tablature for this and the on-screen tab viewer, uh, which is helpful just as a review. Uh, the on-screen tab viewer is handy because you can slow it down and, and loop sections and all that fun stuff if you, if you really want to dissect it. But all right, let me, let me back up. We'll go through it one more time and that'll conclude this half. So here we go. And that's the end of part one. We'll see you in part two.